House of Perdue, August 12, 1813. Look at the silly stem moving into the estate. The blood is still wet from the guillotine's blade, and yet the new duke and his family see it perfectly fit to claim the Milo estate. More offensive than their lack of decorum is their furniture. Looks like something from a low-rent opera house. <laughs> Nouveau riche. These people don't know what to do with wealth. Yet, I suppose I should welcome our new neighbors with a warm smile and open arms. Or at least a warm smile with a dagger behind my back. Have we not shown loyalty to the crown? And this is how the king rewards us? By making Louis Célestin a duke instead of my husband? Not to mention this nonsense about the currency. They pillage and plunder gold from every household in Haiti to fund this foolish mission, while rebellion brews in the South. When attention is divided, power is easily won. Our king knows that more than most. Hmm. Perhaps my loyalty should be placed elsewhere. You are now listening to Prestige, the podcast, episode three, The Baroness. Antoinette, stop pacing. You'll wear a hole in the carpet. Oh, mon Dieu! How can you be so calm? Imagine rolling a cigarette at a time like this. I take it your morning cafe was not strong enough, huh? Your jokes are not amusing, Pierre. There's no need to fret, my love. The king's whims come and go like ocean tides. If I reacted to every one of his decisions, I would never get a moment's rest. Words do little to soothe this injustice. Louis Celestin has always been earnest. I doubt he'll last a year as duke. Nobility is not for the faint or pure of heart. He was shrewd enough to survive the revolution and become one of the king's most trusted advisors. It may take him time to learn the politics of court, but he is no simpleton. Come close to me, darling. Take your mind off these things. The true weakness may lie in his eldest son, Emmanuel. His recklessness would undoubtedly spell downfall for the house of Milo. Ah, you make a fair point. A man tempted by drink and women is simple to manipulate. Entrez. You may enter. Excusez-moi, madame. May I present Leonie Bijou? A girl enters carrying a clothing trunk. Pierre tries to hide it, but his eyes widen as he surveys her, scanning her youthful body quickly but thoroughly. She surely doesn't notice, but I do. As I said, I know all too well how to deal with a lustful man. Ah, yes. You must be here to discuss the lady's maid position for my wife, Madame Perdu. What a lovely dress, Miss Bijou. Merci, monsieur. Pierre, I'm sure you have more important affairs to attend to. I can conduct this meeting alone, mon chéri. I don't mind, darling. Nonsense, mon amour. This is women's business. I insist. If you insist. The position is for a lady's maid. Yet, you have no prior experience? Not formal, no. But I have apprenticed with my mother as a dressmaker for years. That is the most important skill a lady's maid can have. Here's a sample of my work. The beadwork is very intricate, all done by hand. You made this gown? Yes. There's not a stitch out of place. And I've never seen such vibrant colors. I mix the dyes myself. I am proficient in hairdressing, shoe, and clothing repair. I also have expertise in suiting. I could assist both your husband and you, Madame Ad... The dress Ad is well-crafted, but uh, much too garish. I am a baroness, not a circus acrobat. Oh, no, if this is not to your liking... I have others. I can run to my mother's shop and fetch more examples. You could run to the equator and it would not be enough. Please, madame, 
I am truly in need of work. If you give me this opportunity, I promise you, I will learn your taste and excel in the position. I'm afraid you are ill-suited for the lady's maid position. Thank you for your time, Madame Petit. However, you are wide and sturdy. Just a plain sort I could use to scrub the dishes. Are you amenable? I should be honored to accept any role you offer, madame. Excellent! And that dress you're wearing is quite useless as a scullery maid. I'll have you change into servant's linens at once. Oui, madame Perdue. You may enter. Pardon, madame. A letter from Sans Souci has arrived. A letter from King Henri Christophe himself. He states the royal first communion for the children of several noble families is to be held at the house of Milo. My child is to have their communion in that damned house of Milo? Again? Again that family has thwarted me. Apologies, madame. Leave me in peace. Show the new girl to the servants' quarters and dismiss whoever made my cafe this morning. It belongs in a pig's den. The darling duke and his family can do no wrong in the eyes of the king. But perhaps the new servant girl can aid me. She is far too talented to seek work at the Perdue estate. So she must be desperate. And desperation is always of use to me. Not as my lady's maid. No, 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 no. She should be far too close to my husband for that position. But I can always add a pretty face for my other endeavors. Perhaps the solution is to stop fighting against the tide and keep my enemies close. Starting with young Emmanuel Celestin. Prestige the Podcast is a Rainbow Media production. Today's episode featured Shane Montprime as Leonie Bijou, Kathleen Gonzalez as Antoinette Perdu, and Joshua Jean Baptiste as Pierre Perdu. The podcast is written and created by Ray Benjamin and Ollie Kins Planchet, produced by Joseph Fuentes, directed by Ollie Kins Planchet, and executive produced by Ray Benjamin and Ollie Kins Planchet. Our sound mixer for this episode was Joseph Fuentes. The sound designer was Alexis Adimora, editor and engineer Alyssa Midcalf, with additional editing by Joseph Fuentes. The Prestige Podcast theme song was composed by Darnell Monestim. Our production assistant was Maya Cryer. Associate producers Mick O'Neill J. Planchet and Shaquan Womack. For business inquiries, email us at info at prestigepod.com and follow us on Instagram at prestigepod for more information and updates. Thanks for listening.